Thus, IIT Dharwad truly delivers the IIT experience. With growing infrastructure, evolving academics, and the student life that is still taking shape, is it the right choice for you? Hello everyone, welcome back to the College Review Series by Akash. In today's video, we are going to review IIT Dharwa. So stick around as we explore everything about this IIT, about its campus, courses, placements, fee structures, scholarships, and a lot more. Indian Institute of Technology, Dharwad, is one of the third generation IIT which was established by Ministry of Education, Government of India in 2016 under the mentorship of IIT Bombay. The IIT was ranked in 101 to 150 range in the engineering category as per NIRF 2024, whereas the IIT was ranked 93rd in NIRF 2023. Now let's have a look at its campus. The IIT is spread across a 470-acre campus near Dharwad, Karnataka. The campus is designed with eco-friendly features such as rainwater harvesting and wastewater treatment system aiming to achieve a zero status in water, energy and waste by 2030. The institute is developing a modern infrastructure by including features such as state-of-the-art classrooms, well-equipped research labs and a central library with extensive academic resources and other essential amenities. The IIT offers a wide range of undergraduate, postgraduate and doctoral level programs. There is a long list of VTech programs offered here at IIT Dharwad. So the candidates seeking admission in one of these courses here at IIT Dharwad need to first of all pass class 12 board examination with physics, chemistry and mathematics as their course subjects. For general category, the required aggregate is 75% and for ST, SC or PWD candidates, the required aggregate is 65%. Further, you need to clear J advance to be eligible for the admission process. And to be eligible for that, you need to first clear J main paper one. Foreign nationals need not to clear J main. They can straight away register themselves for J advance. Thereafter, the candidates register themselves for JOSA counseling based on the marks secured in J advance. Further, the candidates verify their documents and pay the required fees. For foreign nationals, they get accepted through DASA and ICCR schemes. Now let's have a look at the fee structure. So the tuition fee at all the IITs is same, which is 1 lakh. Whereas for ST, SC or PWD candidates, they don't have to pay tuition fee. So the total cost for the four years of BTEC program from IIT Dharwad is going to be around 10.9 lakh. So with this, the IIT also offers certain fee waivers to its economically weaker section students. Like all the ST, SC or PWD candidates, they get full remission of the tuition fee. For all the general and OBC candidates with parental income less than 1 lakh, they once again get complete remission of tuition fee. To all the general and OBC candidates with parental income between 1 lakh to 5 lakh, they get two-thirds of the remission of tuition fee. Along with this, all the students shall have an access to the interest-free loan under the Vidya Lakshmi scheme for the total portion of tuition fee payable. Moreover, the IIT also offers certain scholarship schemes to its meritorious and economically weaker section students. Here is the list of scholarships. National Scholarship Portal as the institute comes under the scheme of National Fellowship and Scholarship for Higher Education of ST students and financial assistance is provided by the ministry to such ST students as per scheme norms. And the second one is Sherman Scholarship. Under this, the underprivileged students with family income less than 5 lakh are provided an assistance of 35,000 per semester. For more information on the scholarship provided by IIT Dharwad, do visit the link given in the description. With this, let's have a look at the placements at IIT. Dharwad. According to media reports, the placement statistics for the year 23-24, the highest package stood at 52 lakh per annum, the average package stood at 12.63 LPA, whereas the median package stood at 14.85 LPA. In addition, a total of 77 students were placed and 12 students opted for higher studies out of total of 125. Here is a list of recruiters who participated in the placement drive 23-24. Moving on to the cutoff now. So here is the branch-wise J-Advanced cutoff for the year 2024 after fifth round of JOSA counselling. 
For chemical engineering, the rank cutoff for general neutral started at 14,948 and closed at 15,739. For the female only category, the rank started at 24,344 and closed at 24,506. For civil and infrastructure engineering, for general neutral candidates, the opening rank stood at 14,375 and the closing rank was 15,945. For the female only category, the same started at 24,560 and closed at 25,079. For the computer science and engineering branch, the opening rank was 3,482 and the closing rank was 6,375 for general neutral. And for Female only category, the same started at 4,989 and closed at 11,138. For electrical and electronics engineering, the rank for general neutral category closed at 9,778 and for female only category, the same closed at 15,299. For more information on IIT Dharbat Cutoff 2024, do visit the link given in the description. Talking about students' life at IIT Dharwad, the IIT has a number of student-driven clubs from music club to photography club to electronics club, curiosity club and astronomy club. Sports is another major component of life at IIT Dharwad. The campus has a well-equipped gym and a number of sports activities are conducted all through the year from cross-country marathons to cricket matches for students, staff and faculty. Talking about location and accessibility, then the IIT is located 17 km from Dharba city and 12 km from Dharba railway station. The nearest airport to reach at IIT Dharba are at Belgaon and at Hubani. Goa airport is about 3 hours by road. Alright, so IIT Dharbad with its newly developed permanent campus is steadily building its identity among the newer IITs. While the infrastructure is improving, it is still a work in progress compared to older IITs. Talking about the placements, then once again, the placements are growing, but still they are not yet on par with well-developed IITs, requiring students to be more proactive in exploring opportunities. So in the end, I would just say that choosing the right IIT depends upon your expectations and what you value the most in your college experience as this was all from me today. Now you let me know which other college or which other IIT do you want me to review next. Don't forget to press the like and subscribe button so you do not miss out on any updates. For more such informative content, stay connected.